How's it going guys? Josh Olufemi here and this is the second video that we are going to be doing with Yasik Adamchik. He is currently the teacher of a VFX masterclass that I'm currently taking behind the scenes. I asked him to do yet another lesson on the channel, just kind of giving you guys a small glimpse of what I'm learning in this masterclass. It's amazing. Um, the link to the masterclass is down below in the description, but I'm not making any money from this. This isn't even a affiliate link. I just purely wanted you guys to have a small glimpse of how awesome Yasik is just as far as his teaching style and how fast it is to learn VFX when you actually have a teacher that's excited about what they're doing. So without further ado, I introduce you to my friend Yasik, the owner of the Filmmaker's VFX Guide. It's a YouTube channel and a course that teaches everything you need to know about VFX and it's in the link below. Yasik, the floor is yours. First of all, thank you just so much for letting me be a guest on this channel. My name is Jacek Adamczyk and I am a filmmaker and VFX creator. I made a course specifically for filmmakers wanting to learn After Effects for visual effects. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to do this effect. You might have seen it in some videos and it's actually quite simple to do. It's going to be using a lot of principles from the previous lesson. All you need is a video of a building you want to animate. Ideally, the bottom of the building would not be visible because it's really hard to animate it from the ground up. And the simpler the background behind the building, the easier it is for you to paint it out. So let's see how it's done. Okay, here we have a shot of the Eiffel Tower and it's handheld, it's not moving a lot, but we have to track it anyway. Okay, so let's think of what we have to do right now. We have to grab a screenshot and erase the tower to have a clean background. We have to have parts of the tower on separate layers to animate them. And we need to track the movement of the shot. The simplest of tracks will be enough. So let's track the shot first. Let's rename our layers. And because it's a panning shot, we know the scale won't change. So all we have to track is the position and the rotation. So let's click track motion, select rotation as well. Let's choose this for our first point. And for our second, let's track the top of the tower. Edit target, tracker, OK. And let's track forward. OK, the track looks great. So let's apply it. X and Y. It seems like it's tracking pretty well. So let's grab a screenshot. Pick any frame in which your building is the most visible. Make sure to mark that time. So click the star on the numerical pad or grab the marker button and grab it over your timeline. So now grab a screenshot. I use the FX console for that and select take a screenshot and then export and save as PNG. And then open your file in Photoshop. Now that we have the file in Photoshop, I duplicate the layer and start erasing the tower. As always, we're using the clone stamp tool. So sample from wherever you need and paint over your tower. Now you can see if we had anything behind it, how difficult it would be to replace everything. So I think we will cover the Photoshop in a separate video, but just a quick tip, if I have to replace something like this, I usually try to isolate it from everything. So you can see we have a floating tower right now and then select it. Make sure to not include anything that's not your tower and then use content aware fill. Perfect. If there are any hiccups like this, just go in and erase it manually. Now that we have our background, copy the bottom layer one more time and select each part of the tower that you're going to animate. So for example, just the top Close the selection, click on the mask, and then you can see we have it on a separate layer. Before importing to After Effects, I usually just apply the layer mask, so it's actually the only thing that's on that layer, and then repeat the process for every part of the frame. So I already have all these parts. This is my background, this is my base, this is my base plus one, base plus two, and the top. And together they make a tower. So now we want to save it, open the After Effects again, and import the Photoshop file. After you import, choose Editable Layer Styles. And now you have access to all of your layers. So let's import everything, except for that original layer, because we don't need that here. 
and use the command alt f to scale everything to your footage now go to your marker and select all of your layers and parent it to the tracker for now you can turn off everything except for your background and use the mask to cover only the part that was behind your tower so the rest of the composition is in fact moving and not just a still image feather it just a bit and let's see how it looks like Looks good, but I'm not sure how much compression will reduce that. So we will have to add the grain after because there is none moving on the background shot. But that's for later. So now we can turn on our layers and it should look exactly like our original image. Except now we can move it. Awesome. So let's change order as well. On the very top, we want to have our base, then base plus one, base plus two and the top so basically reversed and the reason for that is if we were to animate the top you can see that it's hiding behind our layers and if it was on top it would be in front so let's keep it in that order and let's make our current position keyframe so we won't have to find the original position again so now go to the bottom and pull it down the same goes for the next one and all of the others so right now, first of all, it's pretty slow and you can see all of them are showing up at the same time. So we don't want that. So let's first of all, speed it up just a little bit. Let's use the easy ease in. Let's tweak the animation, the graph editor, and let's move the animations in time just a little bit. So let's see how it looks right now. Pretty cool. So for the next thing, we want to hide it behind these buildings. So the easiest way to do that is to create a solid, mask it out and use it as a track mat for our tower layers. Because we don't want to repeat the track mat for every one of these layers, let's pre-compose that and we will use the track mat on the pre-composition. But first, connect the tower animation to the tracker once again, so it's tracked. Okay, so let's get a little closer, create a new solid, and let's draw a mask. Now all we have to do is put solid above our animation layer and use it as alpha inverted mat, because we want the tower to show up where the layer is not visible. And we can feather this mask, maybe one pixel. And if you notice that you can see through the edges, just go to the mask options, select mask expansion. Let's turn off this for now and dial it back just a little bit. So let's see how it looks. Cool. Let's connect the solid to the tracker. So it's tracked as well. And you can see there are some see-through edges here. So we can adjust the mask. Looks good. And on the other side, yep, that looks good. So let's turn on the motion blur, but we have to do it for the individual layers inside of the precomp. And pro tip, uh, something that just happened to me, if you don't see the motion blur, even though it is on here and here, just make sure in your composition settings, in advanced tab, your shutter angle is at least 180 to get that natural motion blur. You can go a little bit higher, doesn't matter. And samples per frame is basically your quality. And you can see there is a motion blur enabled. As I mentioned, there is no noise in the background. So let's first get rid of the grain to make it smooth and then use match grain. And it's a little much so we can dial it down, maybe 0.7, yeah, that looks about right. And of course we can add some other things like debris, so I'm going to use this. And maybe this one. So let's bring these in. So just before the tower pops up, let's put these flying debris. So it's gonna start right about here. Let's scale it 
down. Let's parent both of these to the tracker. We can scale it up just a little bit. And we can duplicate the solid. In fact, let's rename it. Uh, and let's duplicate it and do exactly the same thing for our debris. Of course, it's too sharp, so we need to blur it. It has to be subtle. We can even turn down the opacity to like 90. Yeah, that looks cool. And then add the falling debris. So I think we can scale it down as well and put it right here. So it begins maybe right here. Let's see how it looks. Okay, first of all, it's a little high. Double click on the rectangle tool that will create a mask all around the layer and feather it out to not have this hard edge. And it's a little too intense. Let's turn this opacity down to about 60 and it's way too sharp. So let's copy our Gaussian blur and add the curves, change it to alpha and turn down the alpha channel. And you can see that something is going on right here, but that's an easy fix. Just go to your top layer and let's create a mask around it and just tighten it up just a little bit around the top. It is behind the motion blur anyway, so it won't be that visible. And you can see it's no longer visible. So this is our final shot. Of course, this is just an example of how to use these principles and you can use them in a variety of effects. But for now, this is it. Hit me up with any questions you may have and I'll see you in the next one. Yasik, appreciate you. Everyone needs to check out the VFX Filmmakers Guide YouTube channel and website down below. I'm definitely going to implement all the stuff I've been learning from you in my next few projects. Bro, you're amazing. I hope everyone had a great time. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. There's actually two more videos for you to watch. And as always, guys, remember, to keep it chill.